Starbucks has just hired its top anti-union lawyer. And while some might be celebrating this, because as we know, they've been engaging in union busting for quite some time, there is a catch. She is being let go while receiving a nearly $8 million severance package when she leaves. By the way, that $8 million severance package could have been used to just pay your employees better, create mm-hmm. better working conditions for them. You know, the kind of stuff that the workers have been asking for, but okay, go ahead and provide the severance package. And look, my guess is they let her go early from some sort of contract. So maybe that's Mm -hmm. why they're trying to sweeten the deal. But nonetheless, it shows you what the executives are willing to spend money on in lieu of taking care of the very people who generate revenue for them in the first place. And those are the workers. Now, Starbucks general counsel Rachel Gonzalez has been removed from her role, the company said in a regulatory filing on Tuesday. Gonzalez, who received more than five $5.3 million in total compensation from the coffee chain last year has moved to an advisory position ahead of her May 20th departure. So she'll still be associated with Starbucks, but it's in a slightly different role, an advisory position. Gonzalez was hired by uh, hired by 2018. Uh, will receive payments totaling nearly $8 million from Starbucks. The company disclosed in a securities filing that Gonzalez will be given a cash payment in recognition of equity grants valued at more than $4.8 million, as well as nearly $2.3 million in severance. Starbucks has also agreed to give Gonzalez a prorated bonus. You gotta give her a bonus, I mean, you gotta give her the bonus. And it is a whopping $470,000, more than that, $470,500 for fiscal 2022. And then the 20,000 that she can use for attorney fees related to the negotiation of her separation agreement, a copy of which is appended to the filing. So. You know, Starbucks really spending their money where it counts. Yeah. Union busting lawyers. Exactly. And there's a lot of crazy numbers there. And I think a lot of people focus on the 8 million. That That's certainly crazy. I am actually perhaps most shocked by the smallest of all of those numbers, the $20,000 to negotiate for lawyers fees in the negotiation process for a separation agreement. You're getting fired effectively and getting handed $8 million. Shouldn't that be a pretty quick like separation a negotiation process. If somebody handed that to me, it would not take a team of lawyers six months to negotiate that. I would sign on the dotted line and you'd be done. You can keep your $20,000, give me the 8 million, I guess. But yeah, it's look, on top of all of what we know about the treatment of, of workers at that corporation, the idea that someone whose job it was to make sure that they weren't able to uh, you know, combine their power, uh, effectively have like a force multiplier. Um, the fact that they would get paid that much while they were working there is bad enough, that it's so lucrative work. And I understand that there's gonna be lawyers working in all sorts of different fields, but that is a career. That is a choice, man, to be an expert yeah. on that. I don't know these people, I'm sure there's a case to be made or something they tell themselves, but that's just a rough job to have. Apparently though, not that rough a job to lose because the idea that you could fail at that job, fail epically amidst, the, and, and thank God, amidst all of these successful labor actions and to make more in failure than many people will make in their entire lives. That is just shocking. It's a reminder of how fundamentally unequal our society is. The things that we value and the things that we don't. As you pointed out, that could go towards employee compensation. I decided to run the numbers myself. And obviously what you get paid there is gonna depend on which state you're in. But the highest number I could find, it would pay for the full yearly salaries of 250 employees. Not just like raising their salary to a reasonable livable wage or something, the full salary for 250 people, literally dozens of Starbucks. Full employee suites could be paid for in just the bonus for a lawyer who failed at their job. Also, there's a little taste of what we experience with idiots like let's say Donald Trump who get lauded as like this smart businessman, right? You have Starbucks executives who like this is what you got from your negotiation. 
Like, did you even try to negotiate? Like, these are supposed to be the geniuses, the, the creme de la creme. <laughs> That's why they're executives, they're the best. That's why they're paid so handsomely, they're the brightest minds. <laughs> this is the result of your negotiation with the lawyer you're trying to let go of? A giant, like, like the. I, this golden parachute, I mean, Joe Manchin's daughter's jealous. Like, you know, she got a golden parachute from Milan Pharmaceuticals, uh, the pharmaceutical company she was the CEO of as she was price gouging people on the EpiPen uh, and breaking antitrust laws that she was never held accountable for. But anyway, that's a different story. It's just amazing that this is, this is the outcome. And uh, I think the reason why they wanted to let her go is because turns out, she wasn't able to stop the efforts to unionize at various Starbucks locations in Buffalo. So two stores in Buffalo, New York have successfully unionized. And there are many others across the country now that are looking to unionize as well. Since last year, a wave of union organizing that started in Buffalo, New York has swept Starbucks stores across the country. Close to 190 have petitioned for union elections and 10 stores, half in Buffalo and the others in New York City, Mesa, Arizona, you've got Knoxville, Tennessee, and in Starbucks's home of Seattle have voted to join Workers United. And so maybe it was her failure in stopping them that forced the executives to want to let go of her. But it was a pricey separation agreement. And mm -hmm. it shows you what they're willing to spend the money on while essentially ignoring the, I think, reasonable demands from their own workers.